Well, I guess third time's a charm, fellas. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Ben, and today we are going to recap Voodoo's run at the fifth annual MAW Wiffle Wars tournament. Let's get into it. Voodoo came into the third MAW tournament of this season with a massive chip on their shoulders. At the beginning of the season, Voodoo was perhaps the most highly touted franchise with a star-studded cast of players and a massive selection of pitchers. More or less, Voodoo has been pretty much as advertised this year. Going into the fifth annual Wiffle Wars event, Voodoo sat at number one in league standings with only two losses. The problem? Both losses were tournament finals games. That's right, with this being the third event of the season, Voodoo had made it into the finals in the previous two tournaments, only to lose out first to the Juggernauts and then to Earl. That being said, the team looked to turn that streak around in this tourney. However, it wouldn't be easy. In their first game of the day, they would be upset by a shorthanded Magic Squad. A shutout pitching performance by Teddy Dretcher was complemented by back-to-back -back hits from Noah Silverman and Teddy to give them the 1-0 win in the first game of the day. However, after that kick in the teeth, Voodoo would come back with a vengeance. They would win their next two pool play games with a 3-0 victory over the Long Balls and a 1-0 win over OG Goon Squad to advance to the quarterfinals, where they would defeat the Dragons by a score of 5-1. While Voodoo were storming through the opposition, another squad was rising from the depths. The Stompers entered 2022 with a lot of pressure to have a big season. However, their first two events were very lackluster, leaving the fans disappointed. But in this event, the Stompers came to play. They would go 4-0 through bracket play, three of those wins via shutout. In the semifinals, they would match up with the new school risers, each team trying to enter their first tournament finals of the season. The Stompers gave the ball to team ace Bryce Clark, and he would stifle the bats of the risers. However, while they seemed to be teetering on the ropes, the combined pitching of Dave Cabanaco and Chris Owens was enough to keep the risers in the game. The dogfight dragged on to the seventh inning when Gino Joseph delivered a shot to right to end the game giving the Stompers a walk-off, one-to-nothing win. The Stompers had made it into their first tournament finals in two years, but fans would have to wait to see who they would face as on Tom Schuler Field, the Juggernauts and Voodoo were in a bit of a pitcher's duel themselves. The Juggernauts giving the ball to Red Sarnowski and Toast getting the ball for Voodoo. Go for it, come on. In the bottom of the second, Vin Lee would put the team on his back with a leadoff double and then later on in the inning would bring that runner in with an RBI single. That one run would be all Toast would need. The Southern Ace was perfect through five innings, getting 13 strikeouts on way to pitching a perfect game to put Voodoo in their third consecutive tournament finals, this time looking to walk away with the belt. In this game, Voodoo's sheer roster depth really began to show itself. The team captain Jordan Robles would take the game on the rubber in his first pitching appearance of the day, and he would come into the game dealing. The run support would also come in early, with Devin Torres taking a hung slider over the wall to give Voodoo the one to nothing advantage. 
However, Bryce Clark and the Stompers were not going to give in that easily. Bryce would bounce back and dig deep to put up zeros, quieting Voodoo's bats. In the bottom of the fourth, Bryce would do it on the other end and deliver a loud two-out triple. This would send Nate Cruz to the plate as a go-ahead run with two outs. Just reaches back for, I mean, uh, Jordan reaches back for a little something extra. But Jordan reared back and got the strikeout to send the game into the final frame, Voodoo still leading 1-0. Voodoo would not be able to tack on any insurance runs in their half of the inning, and the Stompers would come to the plate in the bottom of the fifth trying to get that tying run. Jordan would strike out the first two batters he faced, and so the whole tournament came down to this at bat. Team captain versus team captain. Yeah! One more, one! With that disgusting changeup, Jordan had gotten the last out of the game. For the first time this year, Voodoo had taken home the MAW Championship belt. Congratulations to Voodoo and the Stompers on both having excellent tournament runs. And there you have it guys, the Wiffle Statement recap of sorts, covering Voodoo's run at the 2022 MAW Wiffle Wars. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, and would like to see more top tier content covering whiffs from across the country, please go ahead and drop a like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at Wiffle Statement. While you're at it, Voodoo has a great online presence of their own, so if you'd like to follow the team as they battle it out the rest of the summer, I've linked all of their socials as well as all of the MAW socials down below in the description of this video, so be sure to go check that out so you don't miss out on any of the action. I would also like to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Weiner Films for basically all the footage used in this video. Besides being a really talented wiffle ball player, Ethan is an absolute artist with what he does behind the camera, and he's been filming some of the best wiffle ball action for years now. If you'd like to see more of his footage, I've linked his website down below in the description. Be sure to go check it out, and thanks again for all the footage, Ethan. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, get out there and play some whiffs, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Goodbye.